Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Today we are chatting with Andrew Danson and Kirsten Hiltz of Tetra Halifax, Rochelle Manette of Venus Envy, and disability advocate April Hubbard, who are investing their time, energy, and passion into a unique project focusing on inclusion via sex toys. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, thanks, thanks for having us. us. Hi. Hey. So Andrew, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this project specifically, well, first of all, Tetra as a whole, we uh, are all about assistive devices and that can be any, any, anything that supports someone in doing part of their day or a new activity. And we bring together skilled volunteers to help make those items. So this particular project is about adapting sex toys or devices used in these, these kinds of contexts. And, and so it's just a particular area of projects really among, among the, the larger context of what we do. Um, but it's something that there's been interest in. We've gotten uh, specific requests uh, wondering if we work in this area. And partially it's something that people don't talk about publicly uh, a lot, but there is a lot of conversation in disability community because there's so little access to this type of thing. So yeah, it kind of came from that of how do we fill this, this gap in access where it totally is just another assistive device, just like any other one. Um, so where can we, where can we, we, how can we help make that happen? How, when, how long ago did the idea come for this project? Like how long have you all been working on it? As a group, just in the last couple of months here, we came together in, was it December that we started talking as a group? Yeah, so it's been- Yeah, I uh, think December, November, something like that. Yeah, yeah, so more recently, but we have um, been talking about it in different ways much longer than that. Um, so yeah, like the, the people who are here, um, there's been, because of some of the, the requests that we've had or some just general community com conversations overlapping with the work that Rochelle has done and some of the, the research projects and other areas that um, have very much overlapped with what you know I do in the, in the Tetra world, but also personally in, in disability act activism and advocacy, yeah. Rochelle, why do you think that this project is important? Oh gosh, where to start? I mean, <laughs> I, so, I mean, coming from Venus Envy, of course, I think that like sex is important. I think we can probably all agree how important sex is for so many people. Um, and there's something really beautiful about um, like the disability community being able to say like, this is something that we need <laughs> and let's make it happen. Um, and I've always been very sort of enthralled by the idea of this like resistance to whatever's going on in our world and like the dominant culture through the use of pleasure. So like for the disability community to be able to be like, screw all this noise, let's like get down and get frisky and have fun and like feel pleasure. That's something that's so important to me personally, but I think there's there's sort of this very cool piece around like this like voice around the community that sort of echoes that um that feels very exciting so I just you know everyone everyone deserves pleasure and so the easier we can access that the better absolutely um April I want to to ask you because to follow up on what what Rochelle uh, what Rochelle was talking about, about, you know, it, it really is just amazing that the disability community is coming together for this. And I would say that it really is, it reminds me of the book, Pleasure Activism. It, it really is in some forms, uh, some ways, like a form of radical, radical activism. Is, is that what you see as uh, the, what you're doing here, um, April? Like, do you see this also as uh, not just inclusion, but uh, as radical activism in a way? Yeah, I think that a lot of what the disability community does is seen as activism. Um, just our participation participation in everyday life and activities that everybody else does is uh, seen as a form of activism uh, to the world because we're not expected to be out there doing a lot of these things. Um, but these conversations have really been happening for years behind the scenes in the disability community 
Um, we're finding our courage to ask our friends uh, what we've been doing and what's worked for us and what hasn't. Um, so this is just a really cool opportunity to expand beyond that and have other experts coming in and really sharing the knowledge that's already there. So it's really exciting. Absolutely. Kirsten, how did you get involved with the, uh, how did you get involved with the project? I um, have been the uh, project coordinator uh, for since about March. So I've been working with Andrew and uh, just started the project. How do you find the response has been? The response has been great. We've had so many um, volunteers wanting to help and people that it, there's a need. So tons of people have been reaching out. That's awesome. Um, Andrew, when somebody, uh, when somebody does reach out, what does that, um, um, what does that look like, right? Like if, uh, if somebody wanted to contribute to this project, uh, what, um, uh, what do they have to, uh, what do they have to do? And what are you looking to learn from folks? Um, right now we have, uh, the application is still open for volunteers who are interested in helping with um, the, the building and designing and, and that part of the project. Um, so this, we're kind of at the second stage of recruiting people. We had at the beginning, we had an open call for people interested in, um, in, the, in having an item designed and participating in that aspect of it, of helping develop and, and see, okay, what, what does somebody actually want themselves? What's gonna be helpful? Let's explore that conversation. And we had options of being engaged in a focus group type thing or more um, individual conversations. And so now we're trying to recruit a group of volunteers who will work with us in that building and, and design side. Um, so as a whole, we are, you know, those are two ways to, to participate. We're also, you know, going to see how the project will, um, yeah, shape up over time and what other ways people might be able to contribute. And then other than that, you know, as, as a whole, Tetra always is, is accepting um, requests from people for items, uh, regardless of the topic. And there's a you know, very easy form on our, on our website where you can submit a request saying what you're looking for and um, what you've tried. And, and someone from the local chapter reaches out and connects with people from there. So where this one, we've kind of gone through some of the recruitment and um, aren't uh, at this point there, we're, we, we have a group of participants that we're looking through and going to be working with um, some of those folks in moving forward. Um, but yeah, there's a few other ways to be involved right now. Um, are you seeing this gap when you look at the market as somebody who's very, very familiar with, um, with sex toys? I am. And, you know, I think that in the last like 10 years, sex toys have come a really long way for being from being made for like one type of body and one kind of sex that's considered normal um, to like expanding into different kinds of bodies and bodies that want different kinds of pleasure and just really kind of moving beyond what we used to think of as normal because um, that is such a subjective term, really. Um, but yeah, I, I think that from my own perspective, like I've, I've hung out around the shop and, and taken toys that like didn't work in certain ways and tried to make them work in other ways. And I call it the MacGyvering of sex toys, where I just like <laughs> bounce around and tape things to each other and try to like put a thing in a different place than it's supposed to go and like really have tried to be creative with what I'm already, what I already have access to. And so this really feels like kind of the basis of this project that like a lot of, a lot of people with disabilities have already done a lot of that, like reworking of items just to make things work for us. And it's just kind of the, you know, we're like oh, the disability community is the best at creating accessible devices because like it's been forced. And so there's, you know, there, there is definitely a need, um, so, like so much so that I've just like created stuff on my own. And I think a lot of us have probably tried that. <laughs> um, but yeah, now just being able to offer an option for people feels really important. And, you know, while we're sort of like 
branching out while the sex toy industry and in general is sort of branching out into more bodies and more options I think that it's time to branch out from like a disability lens as well but um what have been some key lessons for for you from um from this project yeah I mean I've learned so much even just in the beginning stages here of this project um I knew a lot from my own personal experience as a wheelchair user already um, and just figuring out as my body changed and adapt uh, as I lost more function and more sensation on uh, how to access pleasure myself. But there's such a wide variety in the disability community and really exploring more about uh, people with uh, increased sensation and loss of sensation. Um, and just sensitivity to different uh, different textures and that kind of thing, exploring all these different areas that I hadn't had to think about yet. Um, and really, it was exciting for me to have an opportunity to bring together a group of people with all these different experiences and really share that knowledge, share that community, and also create a space where people could feel comfortable enough to ask their questions. Um, there's so many times that me personally, I have a question, but I don't necessarily have the thought fully formed in my mind. So I wouldn't be ready to go into Venus Envy and ask the specific question yet, but to come together with another group of folks and share this knowledge together, we can work out what our question is and go from there to find the answer. So uh, that's been really exciting to me to be able to learn from community and to expand on our knowledge that way and just have a safe space to to share and learn together and we've really seen such a wide variety in the applicants um, backgrounds and needs and it's really exciting to see all the different areas that that we can hopefully be of some assistance and help them find what works for them that's awesome kirsten what is exciting for you about this project it's it's all really exciting for me um there, I feel like everybody deserves to feel pleasure. So why shouldn't somebody with a disability have, like, why should we not be able, not have to, or not be able to when everyone else can? And this is a way to help, help people with disabilities and give us an outlet and yeah. yeah, and to raise awareness and to raise, and to raise awareness, awareness as well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, Andrew, what are the uh, what are the next steps? Hmm. I mean, right now, um, if people are interested in volunteering, we are still taking applicants for that. Um, and uh, about our next steps, and um, we are kind of still moving through uh, bringing people on as as volunteers and and selecting our, our group of folks who we'll be working with moving forward. Um, uh, what next steps for Where other can people? people? Yeah. Um, there right now, you can find information about the project through our Facebook page, the uh, Tetra Society of North America-Atlantic, um, and also the Venus Envy Halifax page as well. Um, so yeah, just kind of, keeping an eye on those things for updates as they come, because I'm sure there'll be other ways for people to engage with it as we go along. Um, yeah, keep the conversation going, keep engaged in it, um, ask the questions and, you know, like it, it's it's a topic that just also needs to have more discussion. Um, so um, does anyone else want to jump in there? April speaking here. Um, another thing that uh, I was kind of surprised by and excited by in uh, my conversations so far is the number of folks that have opened up to us about uh, conversations around safety concerns and sex or conversations around um, how do I have these conversations with caregivers and have them assist me in sex. Mm. So all these conversations that expand beyond just physically accessing your own body um, and are attached to finding pleasure. Um, it's just been really, really exciting to have those conversations and we're discovering each day that we do this new conversations that are still connected to it, that uh, there's so many more worlds to explore. And uh, yeah, there's a lot more learning to do. 
There is, and a lot more, uh, and a lot more work to do. And I am so grateful, uh, as many of us are, for all of your work and for your passion on this. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And I'm going to put the links to those pages in the uh, in the comment section of the video. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.